Big Brother is always watching us. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird. Hi, I'm Christine Bittman, and this is Social, my weekly program focusing on how small businesses in the Hudson Valley are actually using social media. And I'm here today with Anne Bine of the Bine Group in Suffern, New York. Hi, Anne. Hi, Christine. So happy to have you at our offices. Again. Because Again. Because we actually, <laughs> I recorded Anne's episode first of this new season, and then we discovered there was no sound. A little problem, but it's solved Technical today. difficulties, mm -hmm. but it is solved today. So thank you very much. My uh, pleasure. For more of your time. My absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. So first of all, tell us what the Bine Group is. The Bine Group is an integrated branding and strategic marketing agency. And we've been in the Hudson Valley um, for over 20 years. Wow, in fact, this is your 20, this year's it 20th is, anniversary. It is, it is. Um, it is the 20th year that we have incorporated. And I am always amazed at, at how quickly it's gone and that it's been 20 years. But then I look in the mirror and I get it. Yeah, it's been 20 <laughs> years for sure. <laughs> well, you are certainly vivacious. And Thank you. And Thank you. forward thinking. Now, as a strategic branding agency, you haven't just stuck to traditional marketing, as some agencies that have been in business for 20, 30 years have done. You have really stayed at the cutting edge, including social media. So can you tell us a little bit about how the buying group has rolled social media into certainly, your traditional marketing certainly. and branding agency? I, I guess it was about maybe even 15 years ago when it all began, and we had our first Lunch and Learn. And I had invited a guest who was an expert in the area. And after our event, we had all of our clients. Um, I was kind of shocked about how things were changing. And of course, my younger staff said, "We're going to do a blog. We're going to mm -hmm. we're going to do some postings." Um, and we really took it on, and it became something that was a part of our marketing world because really, it's all a different. It's all about touch points, and this Absolutely. is just another touch point where you can tell a story about your brand. That's a really, really good point. And you've used a word that I really like. Do you you call it tradigital? Yes, I do. I do. And it's not that I didn't create the word, but somebody who I went to Pratt with did, and I just held on to it. And it's the concept that, you know, that there's traditional, which means we're pushing information out, you know, advertising and however we do that. And then we also have the digital world where we're trying to pull people in, mm -hmm. get them interested in one of spend time with us but in the middle is something we call true digital and that's where there's a lot of power that small companies can really take advantage of and what that means is email blasts e-newsletters the whole concept being that you are sending this out but because you have engaged they will hopefully click through so it's short bits of information and lots of uh, click throughs for them to be a part and a participant in in whatever it is you're talking about and it's a much more direct way to communicate to your audience because if you put up a billboard or you put an ad in a magazine, those are important touch points, ones which I know right. that you do still do for your clients. Right. But you're able to target the market a lot more. Absolutely. And, and even the most traditional thing, like you said, a billboard, um, we recently did a, a project for a, cl a client, actually a big, a big hotel, and the billboards, um, which are on the highway, People don't realize it, of course, because Big Brother is always watching us. It's a little weird. But if you pass that billboard, it will ping and know that you passed and that maybe you glanced at it or maybe you noticed it. But now it's going to send you an ad that to tell great. you more information. So it's traditional and digital and all everything in between. It's all about um, telling a story about your brand and being consistent. So branding is our thing. It's what I've always been involved with. But now it's making clients understand that that's at the center and then you have to reach all the spokes, but you have to be consistent in your brand so people know who you are. Now, what are some ways in which brands can be consistent? Um, well, I mean, obviously it could be the, the tone of what you send out. I mean, right now, uh, content is truly king. And if you're sending out content, it should feel like it's coming from the same um, environment, the same community. Um, so you really want to be consistent in that. Obviously, you know, it's not really colors. You can do different campaigns. That's not a problem. But it should have a feeling of who you are and be true to who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, of course, if you are going to have your logo, that it always looks consistent, that the colors are the same, that the type fonts are the same. Um, and if you are going to do campaigns, 
you have to figure out who you are. Is it going to be a lot of fun campaigns, kind of like what you do, Christine? You do a lot of fun stuff. It's her personality. And I, I told Christine um, a couple of years ago that she was her brand. I really am. You really are. And you just <laughs> made that even more obvious with your red hair. So, Indeed. Um, but anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so I like your glasses, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was told as a child that a redhead should never wear red. And mm. I have since rebelled as rebelled. an adult because I always wore blues and greens. I was never allowed to wear pinks or reds. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, <laughs> I guess I digress a little bit here. Um, yeah, so it's it's really all about being consistent and telling a story. And the thing to remember also in your branding is that people... Um, they, they've done research that if you if you give people a, if you have a meeting or you or you or you're sharing some information, people remember about five percent of the facts you've shared, but they always remember how you feel, how you've made them feel. Excuse yes. me, how you've made them feel. So it's very important to understand what your story is, no matter what size your company is. And larger corporations have gotten that totally, like yes. Starbucks mm -hmm. and anybody else. You know, Target. They have figured out who they are, and they express it in everything that they do. Now, what are some ways that you maybe tell the story a little differently in traditional media versus on social media? Um, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know that there really is that much of a difference, to be quite honest, mm -hmm. because people are not spending a lot of time, you know, what did they say that we have, you know, a goldfish has more, you know, <laughs> spends more time looking at something than humans do. So I think it all is impacted by social media, quite mm -hmm. honestly. And even advertising now has taken the, I mean, there may be a brochure, but there's certainly banner ads that are going online or, you know, Facebook ads that are going online. So, you know, in some ways, it's really a marriage. Um, and like the husband and wife, they have to sort of get to get along, get together and mm -hmm. get each other. Yeah. So it's, it's not that different. You should be able to see an ad or a brochure or something um, online and understand it's the same person or company telling their story. And digital, does that make sense? It does. And digital has so dominated the way that we're used to consuming information that it makes sense that even traditional tra <laughs> traditional, and yeah, traditional yeah, yeah. methods uh, do kind of follow the conversational... Oh, oh they do. They absolutely yeah. do. And I think that you know, you, the whole goal is even with um, digital is you're trying to bring people either to your website mm -hmm. or to a commercial that you've done, and you're mm -hmm. trying to keep them there as long as possible and make people involved and interested in the story that you're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. And that might be through um, contests or campaigns that you're doing or any fun ideas that you can come up with. If you're not, you know, if that's the kind of company you are, obviously, if you're if you're selling something that's a little more serious, there's going to be a different approach of how you're going to tell it. Yeah. Um, but you're not going to say comment and share and tag a friend so we can do your will. No, no, that's yeah. not going to be happening. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Wouldn't oh, be appropriate. No. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's an interesting time that we live in. And personally, um, I'm fascinated. I'm always learning. And I always say anybody who truly thinks they're an expert you know, it changes so quickly. Yes. So if you care, if you're involved, if you're interested, I know you go to a, a lot of different places to keep up mm -hmm. with what's happening because it's changing There's constantly. something to learn literally every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. and everything brings you to the next point, whatever that is. We don't know what the next hot thing will be, mm -hmm. right? That's very true. You know, I see it almost as planets that implode, <laughs> you know? There's a new planet, yes. and then all of a sudden the planet implodes. It's gone. Facebook so is readying their Death Star. Right. <laughs> I think Snapchat might be Alderaan. Yeah, I like that. That's really great. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, like, really absolutely. Your specs. We'll absolutely, see. absolutely. Um, so now another question. Your your firm brands other people and markets for other people. How do you how have you decided to manage your firm's digital presence? Well, it started really with um uh, uh, an experience of bringing us all together trying to understand who we were mm -hmm. um, and it was a really fun time we kind of played off the idea if we were a car what kind of car would we be and mm -hmm. I always say that to my clients too you know are you a, are you um, you know a 60s convertible or are you a Mercedes Benz you mm -hmm. know and that sort of determines how your brand story comes out mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing was you know if if who could we relate to most as um, somebody who's in the news? And we chose Tina Fey mm -hmm. because we thought Tina was fun, bright. Um, and then we decided we wanted to create that personality 
um, and a mantra for our firm in order to tell our story. So when we do our our um, social media, you know, it's involved with teaching mm -hmm. because that's another important part. In my life, I love teaching. Absolutely. Um, so it's teaching, helping, but then having fun. Nice. Having fun. Um, if I, That's for us personally. It's always hard because when you're doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you it's sort of, you know, like the shoemakers. Yes. You know, shoes. The cobbler's shoulder. Uh, you know, it, it's tough. But we, we've managed. We have a, a tight schedule and, and we have some great people on staff who, who manage that for us. So it, it's fun. It's a, you're having a good time. What are some hallmarks of your brand that you make sure to always communicate on digital? I think it's that um, it's not about us, it's about you. And I think it's very important for um, our philosophy and our mantra for people to understand that we're there to help them, that we're going to help them tell their story, that we're a partner. So those are things we try to express whenever we're doing anything by sharing articles. I also um, do a lot of articles myself that are on LinkedIn. Um, and sometimes it's funny, it has nothing to do with marketing um, because it's just life. So this has been an interesting year for women. And um, it's, hard, that. it's hard not to write about that. Mm -hmm. So we did it from the point of view of advertising for women, how it's changed, how we still struggle. Um, and then most recently I'm, I wrote an article, it isn't live yet, about how although there are so many more women in business, we are only 4% of the money that we make 4% of the money. Oh. And also just the idea of why women go into business for themselves, which mm -hmm. is fascinating too. And I did a survey, which I shared at an event and got some interesting responses. So um, I'm guessing opportunity. Uh, in terms of why they went into business, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on the age of the woman. Interesting. Um, it has changed through the years for women who, of a certain age. It's, it's, pretty much they feel like they can't get up the ladder any yeah, longer. Yeah, that's what I meant by or, Yes, yes. And sometimes it's really what I call subtle gender bias, mm -hmm. which is a whole other thing, you know, yes. or a soft bias. It's not the kind of thing that's in your face necessarily, mm -hmm. like the Me Too um, mm -hmm. movement, but it's something that impacts uh, women in general. So, And that's even after they start their own business, yeah. depending on what they're selling, obviously. If you're a yoga instructor... Or, you know, you're, you're in, more in retail, it's not really an issue. But mm -hmm. if you're competing with, with men mm -hmm. in, in tech, technology or any other areas, it, it, it is something that we live with. And um, I find it fascinating to understand it better. Well, one thing I've been really happy about um, in digital marketing is I feel like women are more women are coming up in the space because it is a newer side of marketing. I think that's it's true. It's creative, it's young, it's vibrant, yes. and I feel like it doesn't bring with it some of the baggage. I think that's true, mm -hmm. and I think that's really, I mean, I look forward to the future. I look forward to the next generation taking over, and I really, really do. And I have a young staff, mm -hmm. so um, I, I just find it fascinating the way they think, and it keeps me current, too, which is, it a, really which is a good thing. Yes, and, you know? and that's something that I admire most about you, the fact that you're someone who has all this traditional marketing background, and you have flexed. Yes. And you, ha and you have yes. spread the knowledge. Um, yes. Anne actually runs the uh, Rockland Business Association Professional Marketing Council. She started it. It's been a great asset to me because it's all a bunch of people sharing best practices. It's totally non-competitive. No one's selling. Right. Everyone's right. saying, right. here's how we can all move forward. Right. A rising tide lifts all boats. That's one of my mottos. That's one of your mottos. Yes, absolutely. And uh, absolutely. you and, really live it. Oh, thank you. And and sometimes it's just being able to have someone to complain to. Yes. <laughs> you know, to share the stress that we have in this field. Because um, it can be stressful. Clients want to have always have a hard time thinking about how to spend their money to spend their money on marketing. They want to know exactly what they're getting for it. And ROI is hard and to ROI prove. ROI is, is hard to prove, but it's something that we have to all learn and be um, aware of. Mm -hmm. And in some ways there there are some great ways and great tools to be aware of what the ROI is, just watching how people respond. Mm -hmm. So which is a great thing about banner ads. I love and banner retargeting. ads. Retargeting. God, retargeting is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really fascinating. I I shared this story last time we spoke about how hard it was for me to give up my magic markers. Yes. You know, as I started as a graphic designer. Um, and I had, you know, the set of two hundred markers and it was very painful when I realized I had to give it away. Um, but I feel um 
that I can bring something to the table because I think younger designers sometimes think in a box because they learned how to design in a box. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to try to get them to think outside of that little screen on the computer mm -hmm. and to approach it in a slightly different way. It's tough. It is. But, you know, as somebody who did it the old way, I think there's some really good things that they could learn, and I learn from what they're doing. So it's it's a great win-win for me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for oh, your insights you. both here today and in general as someone who I've certainly learned a lot from and continue to learn from. Okay. Uh, again, I'm Christine Gretman. This is Social. I do this every week, and I'm going to be releasing it every Friday, talking to real small business owners in the Hudson Valley about how they use social. Thank you to Andy. Thank you. you find My your pleasure. And to the next week. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone.